Hello everyone, this is Dr. Arunima from Red Dot Health welcoming you to another edition of Health Talks by Red Dot Health. In India, stroke remains to be the second most common cause of death amongst Indians while remaining the fifth most common cause of disability. Every 40 seconds an Indian suffers from stroke. Every four minutes there is a stroke related death in India. Today on World Stroke Day, it's my proud privilege to have with us Dr. Subhash Kaul on our podcast. Dr. Call has an experience of over 30 years in the field of neurology and so currently practices at Kim's Hospital Begum Pate as a senior consultant for neurology. Welcome, Dr. Call. Thank you. So to start with, before we get into the statistics and the risk factors, I want to understand from you, sir, what is the difference between a stroke and a heart attack? A lot of people still confuse stroke with a heart attack. Yeah. The common people do confuse stroke with heart attack, but actually in the medical literature, scientific literature, stroke always means a brain stroke. And uh, by brain stroke, we mean that whenever there is a dysfunction of the brain because of the interruption in the blood supply of the brain, that's called stroke. And why it's called stroke is because it is something which happens suddenly, it strikes the brain. It comes somewhere out of the blue and strikes the brain and falls the patient down. Now, there are two types of stroke. One is called a ischemic stroke in which there is an interruption of the blood supply because of a clot. That's called ischemic stroke. 80% of the strokes are ischemic strokes. But 20% of the stroke, what happens is that the blood supply, the blood vessel ruptures. It's called brain hemorrhage. So anyone can happen in any individual. And because of that, a person gets a paralysis and there are many symptoms. This is what's called stroke. So, so in short, heart attack is a different thing. Stroke is a brain problem. So, as you mentioned, sir, while stroke happens suddenly, the onset is sudden, but there's a, there's a lot of risk factors over time which contribute at the end of the day to a person having an episode of stroke. Sure. So, what would you say the primary risk factor for stroke currently in India would be? So, I think you have uh, already said it yourself. The stroke happens suddenly, but the risk factors work over decades. So what are the risk factors? Risk factors are those things which make a person susceptible to develop a stroke. So what are those? First thing is that the blood vessels become weak. You know, the, the blood vessels are not healthy. There's a disease of the blood vessels. And what causes the disease of the blood vessels? It's hypertension. It's diabetes. It's high cholesterol, it's smoking, it is stressful life, it is alcohol abuse, right? So, and then another thing is genetic propensity. Sometimes if there's a family history of stroke, it makes you more liable to get it. It doesn't mean that every person having these risk factors will definitely get a stroke. But it means that they have more chances of getting a stroke. And these risk factors do not act on one day, they act over decades. So therefore, one has to be aware of all these risk factors so that his blood vessels are healthy, so that these blood vessels don't get blocked or don't get ruptured at a stage in one's life. So while one has a stroke incidence, how is it that people around them can recognize the person is suffering from stroke, can call, can call for a necessary help accordingly? Yes, that's also a good question. It's very important because People miss sometimes stroke and think, no problem, we'll wait till morning and then they lose the opportunity to treat. Any neurological symptom, if it comes suddenly, can be a stroke. It may not be a stroke, that is for the doctor to decide, but it can be a stroke. So you have to seek a doctor. Now, what are those symptoms? Sudden difficulty in talking, you know. Sudden difficulty in understanding. Sudden loss of vision. Please mark the word sudden. If somebody says, I may have loss of vision for the last one year, that is not a stroke. Sudden means one moment he's all right, second moment he's not talking at all. This is one. Sudden weakness of one side of the body. That is the commonest. That suddenly your hand doesn't work. Suddenly your leg. Suddenly you fall down. And particularly when it is one side. Sudden giddiness along with double vision. Right? Sudden severe headache, the worst headache of one's life. Sudden unconsciousness. So any of these things, if they happen suddenly, 
it can be a stroke. And whether it's a stroke or not will be then found out in the hospital by doing the tests and CT scans and MRI scans. But these can be the s symptoms uh, to which the family or the caregivers or the relatives should be sensitive to. Uh, let's say, sir, if uh, someone is suffering from any of these symptoms and they choose not to go to a healthcare facility or a stroke hospital, what do you think are the repercussions here of the delayed response in treatment? As I said that these symptoms occur because of uh, either a clot or because of hemorrhage. Now, if a patient comes in time to a hospital, there are injections which can be given which can dissolve that clot and the patient can become completely normal if he reaches the hospital within, let us say, four hours, five hours. In fact, even earlier than that, the, the earlier you reach, the better it is. But even after four hours, if you reach a hospital, you may not be able to dissolve the clot by giving the injection, but we have got techniques by which you can remove the clot mechanically. That's called endovascular thrombectomy. That means you push a wire through a person's veins and then go to the clot and pull it out. But all these are time-specific procedures. The intravenous injection to dissolve the clot can be given only up to four hours. After that, it does not act. It can worsen the patient. Similarly, the wire pulling procedure to pull out the clot can be done only up to few hours, let us say 12 to 24 hours. If you come after two days, then nothing can be done. Now, the problem is that by that time, the brain is irreversibly damaged and the person is disabled for his whole life. The whole life he may not be able to speak. The whole life he will not be able to walk. So these are the repercussions. And I have seen this, even the most intelligent people, most professionals, they, are, they don't have this awareness. They, they waste their time. But clearly when it happens in the evening, they say, okay, we'll wait till morning, we'll see what will happen. And by that time, it's very late. So therefore, it's very important for the entire public to know that any symptom of this nature, which I mentioned, if it comes suddenly, they must immediately go to the nearest hospital, preferably a hospital where strokes are seen, means not small nursing homes, or, but major hospitals, and uh, get the appropriate attention. Dr. Call well said and that immediate intervention whenever someone sees a symptom of stroke is of utmost importance. So if it's not possible for the patient to drive, someone's there to drive, or either you call an ambulance service to get you to the nearest stroke center. So coming to another interesting statistic that we saw, the incidences of stroke amongst young population is increasing in India, are on a rise. Around 15 to 30% incidences now right now of stroke are occurring amongst individuals below 30 years of age. So what do you think is the reason for that? Is it the lifestyle effects or is it something else? It's a good question which you have asked. The first reason is that our overall lifespan of Indian is less, at least 20 years lesser than the Western countries. So all diseases which are related to these um, uh, blood vessels, whether it's a heart attack or whether it's a kidney disease, they happen about 10 years earlier in us, you know, because our whole lifespan is telescoped. This is one reason. And the second reason is the risk factors which I told you, hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, you'll be surprised to know that they are happening at an earlier age now than they were happening before 20 years in our younger population. The reason is definitely lifestyle changes. Our children don't walk now the way our parents used to walk. Right. I remember my father throughout his life has walked to his place of work three miles, four miles, and our children don't walk at all now. They are right. in their public transport or personal transport and also that is one major factor that people have stopped walking. They're sitting all the time. Lifestyle. All the time they are being put out of couches just looking at the TV. They don't go to the playground to play games. They play games on video. They play games on mobile. So therefore this is, there's an epidemic of obesity among the young people. And what is the food? There's a, what the, the, the popular term is there's a McDonaldization okay. of the entire eating. People are eating uncle chips, people are eating uh, pizzas, people are eating, particularly in the, not only in the urban sphere, but even in the rural areas also. Soft drinks, cold drinks, these are poisons. These are causing liver disease, um, diabetes, hypertension. There has been a survey in Bombay, very important survey a few years back, that they have found that in the high school children, about 
20% of the people are already having hypertension without knowing. And we are also doing our research project right now and we are amazed to see that most of the young people that you are telling who are suddenly brought with a stroke to us in the age group 30, 35, they have high blood pressure of which they are not aware at all because nobody checks it. So you are right. We are seeing more and more people yeah. in the younger strata with stroke and the cause are unidentified risk factors of which they are not themselves aware. And on top of that, smoking really has not gone down to the extent exactly. it should have gone. I'm seeing even girls also not smoking, boys smoking everywhere. So all these things contribute to what's called atherosclerosis. There's a premature atherosclerosis in our young people which starts as early as 30 years. So that is the reason why they land up with the brain stroke. Correct. So... As I said, time is brain. When it comes to stroke, prevention is the key. Once you have stroke, you need to rush to the nearest healthcare facility to be saved. Sir, would you say regular monitoring of blood pressure amongst individuals, amongst younger people? does? Oh, yes. Oh, I think this is not what I am saying. These are the recommendations by the Indian Hypertension Society that after the age of 20, every youngster should get his blood pressure checked at least every five years. Then after you cross 30, then you may do it every three years. After you are 40, then you have to check every year. But at the age of 20, first time the blood pressure should be checked. I am not seeing any school checking blood pressure of the students. I am not seeing even colleges checking the blood pressure. This is very important because this is important for prevention of a stroke. Once you know, just by your lifestyle, you can control the risk factors. I completely agree with you. Yeah. Correct. So, uh, coming to the fact that females a lot of times have, in a lot of geographies, will have more incidences of stroke. Yeah. What could be the reason for that? See, the uh, females uh, have some specific reasons which make them a little more prone to stroke at a certain stage in their life. One is during the reproductive stage of a woman, many times they take oral contraceptives. And these are risk factors. And as I was just now alluding to you, Many of the ladies also have migraine. Migraine is more common in women than in men, particularly right. in the young girls. And unfortunately, these days, many of the young girls have taken to smoking also. And the research has found the combination of these three things, migraine plus oral contraceptive plus smoking, it is it, it has a very high chances of causing a stroke. Now, you may not have all the three, yeah. uh, but even one of them can make you more prone. Then pregnancy itself can be a risk factor of stroke and the period following pregnancy, uh, at that time the blood has a tendency to get formed into clots. So therefore all women uh, need to be monitored for their risk factors and particularly during pregnancy one has to look at them to see. But after that, after the pregnancy period is over, then they are not at a higher risk uh, than okay. men. In fact, then their risk comes down. Then for the rest of the life it is the men who are having higher risk of stroke. Definitely. So, uh, that's that's a very interesting information there, sir. Coming to uh, the dietary connotations associated with stroke, is it associated with an increased amount of processed food that we have these days? Or is it directly maybe associated with the increased salt intake? No, you have said correctly. Those both things are interrelated. See, processed food basically uses oils and it uses saturated oils because that's what gives it its taste. It uses salt. Oil and salt are the ingredients of the processed food. It increases the longevity of the food and it gives taste. So you take any processed food, you know, whether it's pizza or whether it is burgers or whether it is chips, they contain all these things. And this is something I'm very happy you, you, you mentioned it it's as bad or even worse than smoking. There is an epidemic of problems because of this processed food. And I have personally seen in my life that even a period of as short as three to six months of processed food can lead to your risk factors going haywire. And you know, in these days, people work from offices, people are not in their homes, they are out of station, and many times they are continuously on processed foods. Cooking food in home has become now rare. Ordering food yes. has become the dog. Yes. You know, they order food. And uh, this is definitely, uh, you have hit the nail um, on where it should be hit. Processed food is poison. I have no hesitation in saying it. 
noted amongst other things stroke is also one of the major causes of disability globally and in india as well so once the once the person is brought for treatment for stroke oh, how does uh, the life look after that is it the physiotherapy that's involved the speech therapy the emotional support the entire rehabilitation process after stroke occurs can you shed light on stroke is a very heterogeneous disease in some cases if the patients get treatment in time they will be normal like you and me almost 30% of the people even if they get normal treatment not the advanced treatment they will become normal after stroke but if we get advanced treatment then of almost 60% of the people will become normal their life will not change it will be as it is before provided they have got treatment in time but about 30 to 40% of people are left with some kind of disability and this disability again is a spectrum some people may have difficulty in thinking their memory may be less their processing time may become more some people may have emotional disturbances mind you these will not happen in each and every person but this will happen in some people depending on which part of the brain has been damaged in the stroke which can vary from person to person so some people have angry outbursts uh, some people have decreased patience uh, this is one this is the higher mental function symptoms but other group of people will have weakness of one side of the body they may need the help of artificial uh, appliances artificial shoes some of them may need a cane some of them may not be able to walk they may need a wheelchair so varying degrees of disabilities can be after a stroke not in all stroke survivors but i would say about 30 to 40% of the people but they are also you know they can improve with physiotherapy with practice with some modern drugs so post stroke life also uh, is possible and at least 50% of the people return to their usual job other remaining 50% some modification in the job profile Uh, how to be there corn itself so before a major stroke occurs is there some warning signs the body exhibits to know that there's danger there's smoking that needs to be stopped or there needs to be a healthier lifestyle and needs to be adopted you know uh you ought to be very lucky to get the warning signs everybody doesn't get the warning sign okay uh first of all any person who has crossed the age of 30 if he has all the risk factors this itself is a big indicator that he is at a risk of stroke even if he has not got a warning stroke even if he has not got warning sign if a person is 30 he's obese he's under stress he's smoking his blood pressure is not under control this is a atom bomb waiting to explode any time this itself is a warning sign even though he has not got any symptoms yet so at that time he has to just take care of his uh, health so that he should not get stroke suddenly mm-hmm. but if the if this stage advances further 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 then some people are very lucky they get sometimes something like a real stroke I means suddenly his speech will stop or suddenly he get a mental block or suddenly his hand will not work and then it will recover this is a real warning you know like trailer of a movie in our ter- in our stroke terminology it's called transient ischemic attack okay. or it's called tia this is a this is a warning signal at least 70% of these tia in the ensuing one week get a real stroke also if not treated if or... not treated yeah. if not if not found out what is the problem why has it happened if you if a person of this transient ischemic attack goes to a hospital and doctor checks his heart he checks his carotid arteries he checks his biochemistry and takes appropriate action then the real stroke will not come okay. but what is also happening in the real world many people ignore it they okay. think that it is something very light benign are ho gaya tha it had happened i already recovered mm-hmm. and then they land up with the major problem so these are the warning signal warning signals are just like a stroke signal mm-hmm. loss of speech giddiness weakness which recovers no short lived strokes and short lived few seconds to few minutes correct few seconds to few minutes mm-hmm. that's all so because it patient recovers completely some of us take it very lightly or oh, nothing will happen it recovered but then second time it doesn't recover mm-hmm. so these are the warning signals a lot of times patients who have already had stroke are on medications for it 
and a lot of times they discontinue it suddenly yes. thinking that maybe i have recovered now nothing can happen what do you think are the risks associated with that no uh, whenever a medicine is given to a patient uh, the doc the patient should ask the doctor how long i have to take it okay hmm. now one of the thing in the mindset of patients is that medicines are for a given period of time this is the mindset this is a cultural uh, trait correct that okay i have to take it for one month i have to take it for two months and funnily sometimes when patients come to see a doctor they stop taking the medicine huh why and i ask why you stopped you know because i had to come to see you today and i want the doctor to see me in my original state rather than under the effect of medicines and many times they get the stroke on the same day because they have left the medicine so most of the medicines which are given for lifestyle diseases are to be taken for life this you have to remember most of the medicines it's only medicines for common cold and all that you took for 2 3 days or you know antibiotics for one week otherwise medicines for hypertension which means high blood pressure medicines for diabetes medicines for high cholesterol medicines to prevent clotting they are usually lifelong medicines unless you know something happens and you become totally normal and your lifestyle has changed then you may stop it but these blood thinners are are to be taken for lifelong and why people stop it because probably they are not in constant touch of the doctors that's why regular visits are very important that's why public awareness is very important which you are doing okay so coming to the advancements or the new technologies that have come up in the realm of stroke treatment one of the things that is catching up is a mobile stroke unit wherein the patients once in the ambulance before reaching the healthcare facility the treatment can start right there so can you just elaborate a bit on that and what's the use of it dogo as you rightly said in stroke time is brain means as the time is passing the brain is getting damaged so first thing is that as soon as the patient attendant see that my patient may be having a stroke he should be immediately removed to the hospital and for that ambulances are of paramount importance and i think it's a great service which you are doing 30 years ago i was getting trained in america and uh, th- it was 108 ambulance service they would call i was just wondering whether it, whether there will be a time when we'll be having such a time such a kind of facility in india and today i'm very happy that you are doing all that work pan india so that is very important now this ambulance service should have personnel who are trained in basic uh, you know what we call airway breathing circulation they should be able to check the pulse of the person they should be able to see whether he needs any oxygen they should keep the person in proper positioning now those are very important because sometimes because of these uh, not taking these precaution patient chokes on itself or sometimes somebody re- relatives feed him something and all and by the time he comes to hospital he has aspirated the complication okay. so therefore proper posturing attention to the basic blood pressure breathing and circulation is very important even within the ambulance Correct. so you need to have oxygen in the ambulance you need to have a person paramedical trained and all mm-hmm. so this all this is important mm-hmm. so that by the time he reaches the hospital at least he's in a good shape for the treatment to start but what you asked is that now we have gone one step further one step higher in advanced countries and i think maybe in india also there is one it is called mobile stroke unit now in mobile stroke unit in addition to these basic facilities like oxygen like a proper bed right like a paramedical person they also have fitted a ct scanner and these days there are nice small size ct scanner they will immediately tell us that what kind of stroke it is is it a clot related stroke or is it a bleeding related stroke because if it is a clot related stroke then you can give them thrombolysis okay. which chemical to dissolve the clot in the ambulance itself now you will ask will the paramedical give the ambulance or even not give there will be in mobile stroke units there are doctors also and he will consult his doctor through our mobile technology okay. through whatsapp or through uh, you know phone uh, he will contact the uh, senior doctor or the stroke expert but the treatment can start in the ambulance itself and i think this is the dream and this mobile stroke unit has become very popular in us we currently do that with one of our clients one of our partner hospitals in ahmedabad where we run a stroke ambulance for them 
and the response time, the call answering time, the ambulance movement, all of that is monitored by us. The hospital supports us with the doctors, the stroke specialists, the paramedics and all of that. So that's an entire setup and an area that is open to be explored. Amongst other things, one of the things that is really catching up these days is artificial intelligence. So uh, has there been an intervention from uh, an AI intervention when it comes to stroke treatment? Yeah. One of the problems in stroke care has been that, as I told you in the beginning only, that many of these treatments are effective only up to a certain time period, like we call it window period, that a patient has to be given this medicine up to 4.5 hours. After 4.5 hours, it's crucial to identify which patient will benefit from treatment and which patient will not benefit from treatment. These treatments are expensive also. We don't want to give an expensive treatment where there is not much hope for recovery. And at the same time, we don't want to leave a patient untreated just because he has crossed 4.5 hours. Hmm. So how to identify it? Now, so far, we are identifying it by our naked eye and by our own clinical judgment, hmm. which is good, but it is not absolutely accurate to the dot. Now we have got a new technology based on artificial intelligence. It's a software. This software is put in the MRI on the already existing modern MRIs. Uh, they are fitted with this. It is. It is. Uh, there are many companies which are making it. The one which is prevalent in India is called Rapid Software. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the company. It's called Rapid Software of Artificial Intelligence. And only two days back, we inaugurated, launched it in the Kim's Hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, what this does is that the moment we see the MRI scan or a CT scan of a patient, it will tell us exactly this much brain is damaged, but this much is dysfunctional but not dead. It can still be salvaged. Exact information it gives us. So it helps us to help patients even at 18 hours, 19 hours, 20, based on this artificial intelligence data. So, so this is the latest in the field of patient selection to optimize the results. So this is not in trial, this has actually been implemented. This is a, approved by FDA of okay. USA, which is the ultimate world over thought to be. It's approved, it's already in practice in India. It's uh, in uh, There are at least 14 to 15 hospitals okay. that's okay. already okay. done. But in Aldar Pradesh and Telangana, Kim's was the first hospital okay. to install this. That's amazing. So, so my key takeaway from this entire conversation, I would say, would be that uh, treatment for stroke, is prevention. The risk starts much before an actual onset of stroke. Before the patient exhibits a symptom, the risks, risk factors have been in play for years, decades maybe. Correct. So, so you said it from young age onwards only, I would say from the age of 14 or 15, we should educate our children to take care of their health, look for risk factors and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle is healthy eating, physical exercise, walking. And from the age of 20, at least do a screening for major risk factors. And then that should continue for the rest of their life. And usually they should be all right. They should not be any. Not only that they will prevent stroke, they will prevent most of the diseases. Most of the diseases are related to the lifestyle. So if this is done from a young age, then, you know, it's very good. Uh, in pre prevention uh, of these major diseases like stroke, heart attack and all these things. Now, suppose if a stroke occurs, God forbid it can occur in anybody, that time one should not waste any time and these major uh, symptoms I have told you, any sudden problem happenings, you know, um, uh, relating to the neurology like speech problem or sudden giddiness or sudden weakness, one should not waste time, one should immediately call the ambulance um, and immediately report to a nearby hospital, preferably a bigger hospital where there are stroke teams so that he can get time, uh, timely treatment, uh, which can make the whole difference in preventing a lifelong disability. That will be my takeaway, uh, you know, to give you. Thank you, Dr. Call, for being here today. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. For all our viewers, thank you for staying tuned. Stay tuned for more such episodes and updates on health from Health.